Let's talk about Heroic Game Launcher today, which is an alternative to Epic Game Launcher. This launcher is meant for Linux, and I've covered alternatives like this in the past, most notably Legendary, which was a command line launcher that you just do through Terminal. This is actually a full front end, and it is actually pretty amazing. So if you're a Linux user and you want to learn more about having like a graphic user interface, this is the video for you. So let's get on the desktop and install it and start using it. Here it is. This is a, just a GitHub project for her, this launcher. You can see some screenshots here. Uh, very cool, great aesthetic. Kind of reminds me a little bit of Lutris, except a little bit cleaner, to be honest. This is pretty amazing. Now there's a lot of different ways to install this depending on the version of Linux you're on. They have a releases tab over here where you can just download whichever version you want. They have app images, so if you don't want to install it, you could actually just download this wrapped app image and it'll launch it. You have a Pac-Man to install for your Arch users. You have an RPM for Fedora and a Deb for Debian or Ubuntu-based distributions. Now for me, I'm going to actually just install it through the AUR. They have this right here, Heroic Games Launcher Dash Bin. So we can just copy this and come into our terminal and we'll just install it through the AUR. And there we go. Pretty small uh, install altogether. Only took probably about a minute to do. So let's go ahead and launch Epic Game Launcher, or Heroic Game Launcher, I should say. It's actually just Heroic. So we need to actually grab our SID number, much like Legendary is, but we have this nice interface. So let's click this, come over to our browser, sign in with Epic Games. Now, when I sign in here from this link, we have this. Now I'm gonna blur out this SID right up here. I'll copy and paste that into our Epic one right here. So I'm gonna just paste that entire thing right here, just like that, and hit login. So once we log in here, let's just try to install something using this graphic. It almost kind of looks like the official launcher. So a couple things here, obviously EAC games or easy anti-cheat games will not work. So something like Dauntless or Fortnite will not work, but pretty much all my other games aren't EAC, so they will work. Uh, I'd say probably just, let's do some Sid Meier Civ 6. That's a pretty good one. And let's try and choose a folder for this. All right, and Civ 6 is done. Now, I did have a problem with the install where it stuck on 22%. And what I did is I went into settings. I looked at the default installation path right here. This path did not exist. So when I pull up my browser and I go to home, I went ahead and created a folder called games. And inside that folder, I went ahead and created a folder called heroic. And then I went ahead, stopped the download in the middle. It already downloaded about a couple gigs. And when I stop the download, and I'll show you one of those real fast, let's install like Darksiders. And I, you can go into home, games, heroic, and then just hit choose here and choose. Now, anytime I try and click choose from this folder, now with Civ 6 in here, it's automatically opening that folder, which is a problem. Uh, however, if I go into recent here, I can just do that and it'll actually install it properly. So kind of still some bugs to be worked out here in the GUI, but I did notice after creating this folder, I had no problems, but subsequent runs and installing more than one game, I needed to do kind of like this little workaround. And I think they'll probably patch this and it might just be something with Nautilus as well as a file manager, but you can see it automatically creating that folder. And that's just the, probably the best way to do it. I just wanted to kind of illustrate that, change that default install path if you don't use that specific one, but always make sure your install equals this path right here and don't select a subdirectory in there. You always want it to be that base directory. Now, during this actual install process, there is some really cool stuff. We go to downloadings and like click on the download. You can see the estimated time that it's going to take. You can see how much has actually been done. And when you cancel right in the middle of the actual install, it says, hey, do you want to keep the downloaded files? So when I had problems off the get-go, I said, yeah, go ahead and keep those temporary files. And then when I went to re-download it, it automatically just queued up all those top files and dumped them where they should be. So really neat pausing and basically resuming and actually even changing the install directory while you're doing this. I was very happy with this implementation. 
Now, other things in the settings here, exit to tray, using dark icon, I like to do both those things and you can kind of see it right here up in the tray. And you can say show and it'll actually show the heroic launcher, but that's the actual icon up here in the top right. Other notable things is how many workers for downloading you can do max i probably would probably set this at like 10. i like to leave a couple threads just for other tasks that are happening on my computer under wine set your default prefix here if you're unsure just leave it at dot wine in your home directory wine version i really like glorious egg rolls version then stock proton it just seems to work a lot better but you can select whatever you want here and then uh, as far as auto install and update DXVK on prefix, you know, I think that probably should be a thing and which is kind of cool. And if there is special config files that are associated with the game you're installing, you can run the EXE on the prefix just by uh, opening it and selecting it here or dragging and dropping the file directly onto this little button. Other settings here showing FPS, uh, using game mode. Uh, personally, if you really want to do some stats, I highly recommend installing Mango HUD and just enabling that. It's so pretty. So with all those settings overviewed, let's go ahead, launch our Civ 6, see if this actually plays because I have never even tried Civ 6 through uh, Epic Games Launcher of any sort. So I wanted to experiment a little further. I installed both Darksiders 1 and 2 and Civ 6, and I was not able to get these natively working very well just because Epic and my current hardware configuration doesn't work. However, I could replicate all this using Legendary from the CLI just to make sure there was a, a actual hardware configuration on my part that was preventing me from really having a lot more success. I would say if you're gonna do this, Having an AMD card will definitely help you out, much like if you are a Linux gamer, you're not going to be using NVIDIA. It's just always a terrible experience. But on top of this, you can also install Legendary and see everything. So just to show you, going to like games and Heroic, if we do like a Legendary and list installed. So you, if you are going to do this, I would recommend having Legendary installed side by side from the Heroic Game Launcher. And you can see all the games I have installed and you can actually launch these directly from the terminal if you wanted. So you can actually have both. It's really nice that I didn't have to reinstall the game in Legendary and also here. It just remembered everything as you know, having it all installed from the Heroic directory. Now, I wanted to show more gameplay and those types of things, but because of the limitations of my current hardware configuration, but using both for Heroic Game Launcher and Legendary, I couldn't really launch much. I know I'd have a lot more success with my old configuration where I actually showed Legendary from the CLI uh, a bit more and showed actual gameplay. And I know if I threw an AMD card in here, I wouldn't have nearly the problems I'm having. But that's just Linux gaming in a nutshell. We kind of have to tinker around a little bit. And honestly, if I was really gaming a bunch in Linux, I would ditch NVIDIA in a heartbeat and move over to AMD as it's just a far more pleasurable experience, especially when going to like the RX 500 line. It's just works so darn well uh, when gaming at like 1080p. But having said all that, what do you all think? Is this something you might do? I mean, it's worth trying out. Uh, I don't recommend buying any games, obviously, from Epic. If you're a Linux gamer, uh, having the Epic Store, is just, there's always going to be this back and forth and just overall meh <laughs> experience. But at the same time, I really can appreciate the open source nature of these projects, both uh, the Heroic Game Launcher where it's come, and then also Legendary having that there still is so nice and them working in tandem. So uh, yeah, let me know your thoughts down below. If you like this video, click the like button. And with that, I'll see you in the next one.